What is going on guys, Alex Tubike here coming at you with another YouTube video. This one's going to be a little bit different. I've been getting a bunch of messages, DMs, whatnot on responses to this one TikTok I made um, and especially my my la or my one chest uh, YouTube video, um, the TikTok especially. So basically I made like a video just talking about like how I grew my chest and I've had this before so this is why I'm making this video just kind of to address it. One of my biggest things and how I said I've, I've built my physique um over time is with this whole um training for aesthetics stuff pump training um pre-exhaustion so um this this one thing has like genuinely i believe has helped change my physique and has like completely helped me you know grow naturally all right so what i when i when i say training for aesthetics which like you guys have probably seen me talk about before if you've like watched my older videos um is basically i train for hypertrophy meaning i don't focus as much on the strength side of things i focus on more of the time under tension the other uh methods of hypertrophy so there's three methods which is mechanical tension there's muscle damage and there's um metabolic stress so just to dumb it down into like simple terms mechanical tension basically is lifting heavy recruiting the most amount of muscle fibers you can pushing a heavier load um and then muscle damage is going to be like more of the eccentric movement this is going to be more of the like um slowing things down a bit the contractions the eccentrics and all that stuff um it's been shown too that eccentrics help rip up fibers more and that basically is going to cause these micro tears in your muscles in your muscle fibers um over time which would be prepared and makes it bigger so last one and then is uh metabolic stress so this is going to be like um high rep range more endurance type stuff and this is to cause more like cellular swelling um lactic acid buildup which has been shown to be in like a favorable environment where the body can rebuild um so yeah so there's three methods and the one that everybody really sticks to the most and knows knows about is mechanical tension because that's basically where you can get like your that's where like the principle of like progressive overload comes from it's like lifting heavy this is where you get like why people bench squat and deadlift um and stuff like that and they're able to build like a decent um foundation off of that so what my um thought process going into lifting was was that like i saw all these kids in my high school who did um it was like the weightlifting classes like the strength training and they all looked like like it's not to be like like mean or have like an ego but they all looked very mid like it because all they would do would be um bench squat deadlift and then like some like power clean like strength or, or explosive building stuff and all the guys had like very they weren't aesthetic physiques um they had a little bit of like a frame you could tell it like they weren't like skinny skinny but it wasn't an aesthetically pleasing physique and i feel like that's a big part of it is because like literally they're only training squat deadlift bench so like yeah that those are things that are going to build a little bit of muscle but like i don't think it builds in an aesthetic physique like you have to like incorporate other methods of training and and like isolation movements and, and hypertrophy training principles other than the strength training principles to build um like a really good aesthetic physique i train to look good not to be strong do you see what i'm saying um it's like having a stock or a stock mustang but then putting a bunch of like outside like things on it to make it look like a wide body kit like leds like, to make it look decked out to make it look like so much faster than it already is like people are gonna see that car and be like yo like he's probably got that thing like twin turbo and he's probably got like a full cap back he's all like all this stuff on it just because of how the it looks on the outside it looks dope and they probably think i have internal mods on it but i don't do you see what i'm saying versus having like a stock or uh, i mean having like a like a like a supercharged mustang but you have no cosmetics under the outside so th the way i'm like explaining this is like having all the cool things on the outside is like having really dope aesthetics like i look like i can lift a lot but i can't i look good with my shirt off but i can't i'd rather be like that versus like being someone who looks very mid um but they're like really dumb strong because like then you can only really show off when you're in the gym or on your social media pages showing how much you're lifting same thing with the car you only can really show off when you're like racing with somebody on the highway because then they'll like see what you got under the hood that's why when i got when i was in high school i started getting into like more of the hypertrophy stuff and i looked in the whole uh process like mechanical tension muscle damage metabolic stress and now when i when i say like i trained for aesthetics it doesn't mean like i don't I don't i completely neglect the thing of training for strength progressive overload is a principle that like plenty of people do and it's been shown to like really help people progress their physiques and it's something you should 100 percent do in your lifts for me if, though i don't back squat i don't deadlift um i don't barbell bench anymore um I'm, and that's more recent i used to barbell bench recently but now i stick the dumbbell just purely because i'm going to going to hit the gym at a hypertrophy standing point i don't care about what i what numbers i hit on certain things i care about progressing my numbers yeah but i don't care about like yo like how much can i put on this bar and like lift it off the ground like that's not like what my mindset is going into the gym i'm sure a lot of you guys clicked on this video because of the title and it's gonna be like the, the main thing that i feel like has completely helped change my physique in the gym 
and that is going to be pre-exhaustion. Now, I guarantee you guys have already heard me talk about this, and this is where I, I talked in my chest video. People asked like how I build a big chest, and I said I pre-exhausted it every single time. When I was before I tore my labrum, especially when I was going into the gym when I was younger, I, it is a genetic strong point, 100. But I would do um, I would do dumbbell um flies like three to four sets and i would super i would either superset it or i would go i'll do that and then i'd go into my bench presses right after and i developed a really strong my muscle connection off rip like as soon as i started lifting when i was like 16 years old i was able to have really nutty chest pumps and like very ha have like good contractions i didn't have any issues with feeling it in my front delt over my chest uh plenty of guys hit me up my dms are saying like yo like alex like i'm doing incline benching i'm doing flat benching and all i feel it in is my front delt like i don't feel my chest activating and now again, you can go into like the science of this. Um, if you're lifting a heavy amount of weight, like a like a, you're providing that mechanical tension, regardless of where you feel it, you're gonna still be working that muscle group just because that's your motor units. They have to recruit the fibers to be able to lift the weight and, the, and to force the weight off your your chest or whatever. Um, but but there are some like studies that low key show that having a mind muscle connection helps, and the pre exhaustion method is is the thing that really can help your mind muscle connection if you lack in your mind muscle connection you just like you can't feel things you go to hit your back one day and you're like doing pull downs and rows and like you feel it in your forearms and your biceps and you're having no back pump like you have you suck at having a back pump you go to hit your chest you suck at having a chest pump you're just hitting your delts it feels like that stuff you need to fix i think that having a mind muscle connection a lot of big bodybuilders like swear up and down that having a mind muscle connection is like key to like building a good physique there was even study a study which i'll bring up um and then jeff nipper has a great video on my most connection stuff and this is where i got the study from and basically they had a group of people um they, they had like no training experience and they had one group focus on internal focuses meaning you're focusing on um training you're, if you're focused you're focusing internally meaning you're focusing on your contractions and they did the exercise of like, uh barbell curls and leg extensions so and the other group only focus on external things meaning they're focusing only on like form or like getting the weight up and lifting um, so the internal group was the mind most connection group and the external was the not mind most connection group not worrying about it And it, it showed that in the um, barbell curls the internal group focusing on mind most connections had almost a twice as much um, It looks like 12.4% to 6.9% um, In their growth in their arms, but in the leg extensions, it was pretty similar both ways. I think that's just because um, leg extension leg extensions um these guys were beginners so i feel like maybe they didn't know how to exactly contract their i don't know quads right away i don't know there, there could have been jeff talked about other underlying issues in the study but regardless so this gives some type of insight that having a good mind muscle connection especially at least in your in your arms has been shown to building more muscle tissue um so again pre-exhausting what that means is it's not to like completely find isolation movement before your your main workout and like fatigue yourself a bunch on it this is this is like for example when i go to hit so let's say if you're on a push pull leg split and you're going on your push day and you want to feel your chest before you go in like the lift i would go to a pec deck or i go to a cable fly i would do just like three sets of like like 15 to 20 reps of a light of a pretty light weight and now when you go into your like your bench press after that that isolation movement you are not going to be as strong as you would if you went straight to that bench press though you will feel it a lot more now I feel like, and this is this is where people go against the, I think they think it goes against the principle of like progressive overload or mechanical tension. You're still lifting a heavy weight after that isolation movement. You're just not lifting as heavy, right? You're gonna feel like you're lifting more weight, honestly. Like that lighter weight will feel heavier because you're already pre-exhausted a bit. But I feel like you'll feel, you'll feel the contraction a thousand times more than if you went straight to that bench press. Now again, like your numbers aren't gonna be crazy, but it's I feel like it's such a slight loss in strength. Like let's say if I can bench like 315 for one rep and i never did the pre-exhaustion method and i go to pre-exhaust and i gotta go to my bench press and i'm about to max out you'll probably get like 300 you probably get a little bit less you're still lifting good heavy weight to recruit enough muscle fibers to be in the principle of mechanical tension you're just not you're not lifting as much as you probably could if you went straight to it right so um that that's my argument for it um other examples when i go to hit shoulders i always start off with lateral raises before i go into any shoulder pressing back i start off with straight arm pull downs or these like one arm side pull downs um, before i go on any of my like heavy rowing movements um every time uh legs i like to do leg extensions um on quad focus days before i go into any pressing movements with my legs um for any hamstring focus days i'll do lying hamstring curls or seated hamstring curls before i go into any like my rdl movements arms usually for arms instead of going to my like let's say triceps i like close grip bench press i'll do um like cables 
I'll do cable push downs for high reps for a few sets before I go into that. Biceps, I'll do cable curls for high reps before I go into any like heavy barbell curl movement. All it is, just pick like a, your favorite exercise that you feel the most in that muscle group. Do it for three sets and do it for like 15 to 20 reps. Don't gas yourself. Don't like completely um, go like completely to failure on all those sets or else you'll be a lot weaker on your, your actual working sets for what you're trying to build, uh, build your strength off of or muscle progressive overload. Um, but honestly, I feel like that has went a long way with my physique. I think that the more you're able to be in tune with the muscle you're training, the more you're going to be able to activate fibers and over time, that's going to lead to more growth. Um, and again, the other side, the other side, uh, of the argument is that you're not going to be able to lift as much weight. Um, it doesn't go against like the principles of progressive overload. Again, if you do it the right way, we're just doing it a little bit to get a little bit of a pump in that muscle group with the isolation exercise before your compound lifts. I feel like it's really not that big of a difference. I really don't. And if you have a different opinion on that, like let me know down below in the comments and just like link me. If you have like studies you've looked at, link it. I used to like be a big nerd when I got into bodybuilding. Like I used to like watch these studies. I was obsessed with Jeff because I would watch all his videos and try to learn as much as I could um because i wanted to utilize like my beginning years of training as much as i could so it's always good to learn stuff like this so that's why i wanted to make a, a video on it because like i get this asked all the time people like ask me like yo how do i build my back um how do i build my chest uh i don't feel i don't feel my work i don't, I don't like how do i get a better pump stuff like that and again the th one thing i just say is pre try pre-exhaustion just try it out for a few weeks if you want to see how it is see how your workouts are see how sore you get even though being sore isn't a direct sign that you're building muscle you can still build muscle without being sore um, but anyways, like just try it. If you haven't tried it before, try it for a few weeks and like come back to this and like let me know how you thought about it or let me know if you've tried it and just DM me and tell me if you liked it or not. Um, this is the way I've trained for the longest time and I've developed a pretty pretty good physique off of just that alone. This is the first time in my life actually um, where I, I like on this bulk I have with my coach where I'm actually like writing down my lifts and I'm trying to do progressive overload. And I'm not even lifting like dumb heavy. Like I'm bulking right now and like a lot of you guys I see in the gym, like you guys do like like benching in like the three to the five rep range and stuff like that. Like that's like, I never have went that low in my reps at all. I never did that. My coach has me like I'm doing still heavy bench press. Like I'm doing like a hundred pound dumbbells and stuff, but I'm shooting towards like the 12 rep mark. Like next like tomorrow I go to hit chest. I'll probably grab the 110s and I'll probably hit around eight. Now like that's like the lowest I'll go is like eight. I aim for like eight to 12. And then once I hit 12, then I'll bump up the weight to the 115s. And then I'll do the 115s till I hit 12 again. Then I'll bump the weight up again. That's how I'm doing my progressive overload. I'm not doing it like all based off like my one or max is like a lot of people do. But I'm telling you that one principle of pre-exhausting and really focusing on building your mind most connection is, is a thing that I feel like a lot of people overlook. Cause like, again, like I get so many kids who, um, oh my Lord, dude, this is another, this is another thing. So I made a video on, um, on preacher curls again i've been in the gym for five years so i do i do exercises a little bit different sometimes just to tweak it a little bit because it'll make me feel the muscle more and if i feel it more i'll choose that variation over the one that people usually teach you because i like to feel it more I have a good mind muscle connection so i made a tiktok about doing preacher curls right cable preacher curls and i said i put the i put the bar right here on my wrist so i'm only bending at my elbow joint and i feel i don't feel it really in my forearms that way versus if i grab it sometimes i'll, I'll twist my my wrist and I'll, I'll get a little bit of a forearm pump, which I don't want. I want I want to target my bicep when I'm doing those preacher curls. So I'll do it like that. And like the one guy on TikTok, um, I forgot his name. He's like a, oh, I forgot his name. And he made like a video saying how um, that's not like an adequate, adequate way to do it. I don't know. And I had a bunch of guys, all these guys who had like NASM certifications, like straight up. All these kids who had like certifications in lifting or whatever, like personal training, all like duetted my video or stitched it and they said how I'm wrong and how like to not listen to me and stuff like that. I'm just like, <laughs> like bro, like I've built like my physique off of doing it like this. And if this is, this is what works for me, um, you can try it. And a lot of people like even back to me up, they're like, yo, I tried your way and I felt it so much more in my bicep. So like, I mean, to me, if it helps you have that mind muscle connection just a little bit more, I feel like it's worth it. So again, it may not be like scientifically proven that like you, you know, it may, might, might not be like, I don't know, these, the way like those, those guys who have these, these PT certifications are like trying to like dismantle it, like scientifically dismantle it. I'm like, bro, it's not that deep, bro. It's not that deep. It may sound like bro science, whatever it is. But like, honestly, there is, again, like that study I just showed in the curls that literally the people who focused on feeling the muscle contract had more growth than the people who just kind of lifted the weights up and tried to get up the weight. I mean, so there is some type of science behind it. 
Um, although I do think all methods you should incorporate in the lifting again, just doing the pre exhaustion method, doing the type of hypertrophy training, um, like the, the pump training, aesthetic training for aesthetics. You, that doesn't mean train light. That does not mean train light. I train like medium to heavy weight, right? So, and that's relative to anybody, right? Like I'm benching again, like tomorrow I'm going to go grab the 110s on flat and wrap them out for eight to 12 reps, right? That's, that's pretty for my size of being 173 pounds. Like that's pretty, that's pretty heavy. That's pretty heavy. Like it's not like one rep max, like I'm not gonna go grab the 130s or the 140s and only hit like four reps. I just don't see that as being uh, like shown, I don't know, backed by science to be the best for hypertrophy. So yeah, so that's pretty much it for um, my little rant on that. Again, I love talking about topics like this. Um, again, I'm not like the nerdiest person. I'm not like no like more plates, more dates. Like I'm not gonna like, or Jeff Nipper, like showing you guys a bunch of studies and stuff like that. I speak purely on the things that I've heard. I, I, I love talking to other people and learning from them. Um, I learn from, I talk about um, my experiences and this that's what I'm relaying to you guys is based off of my experiences and what I've learned over the last five years of training and stuff like that. And yeah, it may sound like a lot of it is bro science or a lot of it's just, uh, you might you might disagree with some of it or think you, you can build it different ways, but I think everybody can build muscle differently. Some things work for some people, some people don't, uh, some things don't work for others. So by me uh, showing you guys how I train, if you like mimic it and it works for you, then that's awesome. If it doesn't, then maybe go to the, you know, one rep maxes and stuff like that. Maybe that helps you build muscle, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so, Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did and you want to see more of these types of styles of video content where I just sit down and kind of talk about a topic, um, like the video, comment, sub, turn the bell notification on. Again, I upload Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And if you want me to do more of these, let me know some ideas down below in the comments of what else you would want me to talk about and get my input on, whatever topics it may be. Um, Cause I, I'd love to see that, maybe, maybe make more of these. Um, but yeah, that's it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And until next time, God bless you.